Hello and welcome to our second tutorial on using CSC Show Control. In our first tutorial we had a quick look at how to add a WAV file to a queue and different ways of creating a queue. On this tutorial we will follow that on and look at ways of manipulating the cues in the audio once they're already in. So I'm starting with a blank workspace again and I'll very quickly just re-add in that uh, pre-show music cue that we had. So I'm just going to simply drag in the pre-show cue uh, into create a new cue. Uh, as discussed before it's telling me that it's a non-wave file. Do you wish to convert? We're going to say no. Uh, if you want to change this at any point, the options under the audio menu, you'll see you have media manager. And in media management, you have the import options, whether it automatically converts or not. Now that I've told it no, it won't ask me again, uh, but we do have the option to go in and turn that back on. So the first file there was our pre-show music. Let's just check that's still working okay. Okay, so it's still there. And we're just going to set a slightly lower level because it is only some background pre-show music. So, of course, once that's playing, as we get nearer to showtime, we're going to want to fade that music out. So let's have a look at how we do that. First thing we need to do is create a second cue. And we're going to label this as fade pre-show. Now that we've created that cue, we need to tell it when we recall this cue that we want to fade the pre-show. So in CSC, we don't actually target a specific cue. We actually target a specific player. So we know that the music is playing on wave player one. So all we need to do is select player one and say for this particular cue, and you have all these different options of what it can do on a queue. Currently, we've used the play command, but we can also stop, we can fade, we can pause, resume. CSC doesn't need to know what is currently being played. So you're not saying fade my pre-show.mp3. You are simply saying fade this player to a new level. Just to give some examples of those. Firstly, if we add the stop command, you'll see that it's now playing stop. So if we were to fire that queue, it's playing the pre-show and when we hit the stop the go button it will stop as it has we could change that action to be fade and then I can set a new level of which to fade to so if I was to fade up for instance it would get louder so let's just try that and then in here I need to put a fade time so I've put in five seconds so if we were to begin that again, we know that we're currently playing at minus 21. We're saying here, when we hit this cue, fade the current level of player one up to minus six over five seconds. And we can see that the mixer and the player then all moved up. We might then want a successive cue to uh, fade out completely. So let's do fade out completely. And then that would be another fade cue. Uh, now you'll notice actually when you add a fade cue, if your previous cue was either a play or a, a previous fade, it does actually give you a hint as to what the previous level it found is. This is quite handy when the cue lists get quite complex. If you're fading something much later down the line, you don't have to keep remembering to go back and see what the previous level was. Because if what you want to do is drop it by 6 dB, obviously it's good to know what it was before. So here I can see the previous level was minus 6. And it's saying that it found the last fade cue or was Q2. So if we want to fade out completely, we're going to pull the fader right to the bottom. I'll leave it at 5 seconds again. And then now we're going to start the pre-show playing. We're going to fade it up. So let's rename this as fade up. Double click on the cue. That brings up the edit window. Let's just put the word up. We have fade up pre-show and fade out completely. So let's run this and see what happens. So pre-show is playing. Hit our next cue. see that we've faded up and when we fire this cue fade out completely and then it takes it totally out 
The other thing you would notice as well at this point is that the fade out completely. Once any fade hits minus 100, you'll see that it stops the player from playing as well. So there's no additional action to actually tell it to stop. Once it hits that point, it stops the original play. If for any reason you do want to pretty much fade it to silence but bring it back in the general advice is to actually fade it uh, to as low as it will probably go about minus 96 you won't hear it but it will still be playing so this is how we then start to manipulate files so we've got uh, q1 here where player one is playing the pre-show we're fading it up on player one again with q2 and we're fading out player one on q3 Whilst all that is happening, player one can't be doing anything else. So if we were to actually add in this queue, uh, or say another queue, let's add a, th a next queue here and say that we had uh, start of show music. If we were to use player one again, and let's just add in something this way. Uh, opening act one, here we go. Let's see what that is. There we go. Some music in here. So this is on the same player as the pre-show music was. And let's just see what happens if we run that. So we have pre-show. We fade up the pre-show for whatever strange reason. And then we fade out completely. If we then started that, you'll hear that it cuts out the previous music because we've now asked player one to do something different so players can be reused constantly throughout the show but if they are already in use by doing one particular action you can't expect them to then do something um, simultaneously so you would need to use a separate player in this case so where we've got start of show music we probably needed to put that on player two not a problem, we don't need to open up and, and load in everything again. We can simply click on this and drag it into player two slot. So this is probably the most complex bit to get your head around with CSC audio programming is you do need to know what players are free. And at first this sounds quite counterintuitive and tricky to actually manipulate and understand. But once the shows are put together, then editing it becomes a lot easier, especially when you're doing click tracks and multi tracks. We can actually start to assign where we want things to be. Those players can be assigned to specific outputs. And then you start to use the mixer down here in a bit more of a serious fashion. And you'll find that actually show manipulation becomes a lot easier when you always know where a cue's audio is going to be. So let's just, uh, I'm going to take out the fade up pre-show because that seems a bit of an odd thing to have. So I've right clicked on here and I'm just going to select delete queue. Are you wish to, or you wish to delete? And we'll say yes. Um, you'll notice now that of course we've got a queue list with strange numbers. Uh, we can either go through and edit any of these numbers. Now this queue here, if I double click, I'm able to manipulate the queue number in here. I can potentially change this to two. Uh, what CSC will allow me to do is change it to any number within the bounds of here. So if I actually try to change it to 4.1, uh, you'll see that it's ignored me because 4.1 would be outside of the bounds. I've got between 1.01 .01 and 3.99 to be able to change that Q number to. You don't, of course, have to do it manually. We can always go to Q, and we've got Q list operations, renumber queues. And I'm going to say, starting at the first Q, number one, increment by one, I've got either the entire queue list or where I'm selected. If I do the whole queue list, you'll now see I've got Q1, Q2, Q3, and everything looks happy again. So now we're coming up with a slightly more realistic show situation. We have our pre-show music, we're then fading out, and we're starting our actual music. So I might maybe want to change that fade time to a bit longer, maybe eight seconds. And let's see what we've got now. I'm just going to hit F5, which takes me back to the top of the show. We'll see that the queue that's highlighted is the one we're about to work on. Now, I'm just going to quickly change the mode of this highlight queue because I find during design time I prefer the bar to be on the queue I'm currently working on. I, I don't actually like the show next queue thing when it comes to design time. So that's quite easy to change. If we go into Tools and then Settings, one of the options that you'll see we have here is uh, highlight next queue, which is this one here. 
And by unticking that and hitting OK, now we'll find that when we fire a cue, the bar stays at that point. The downside of doing this is that if I hit go now, it's simply going to fire Q1 again because I still have Q1 selected. So if you want to work in this mode, then you need to get used to using a separate method of fire and go. And in this case, you can either use the space bar for next Q or you can actually use this short cut up here, which is also next Q. So it depends which way you like working. So we're fading out. And you'll see now we've got a smooth transition between the cues. Now, of course, if that was a stage management operated show, they probably don't want to hit the button to fade out the cue and then another button to start the show. They probably just want to hit the one button to start the show completely. So, of course, what we could do here is actually create a link between these two cues. So I'm just going to quickly do two things. I'm going to rename this to start the show. Uh, actually, and whilst I was in that window, uh, you'll see I have uh, a link, link time and link to queue. So I can specify in here that actually, uh, say three seconds later after starting that, I want to link to the next queue, which is three. And if I enter those details, we'll see that we now have a link and a time specified here. So if I run that queue sequence again, pre-show starts, start the show, you'll see the time counting down here, and we're straight into the start of the show. You can also, rather than having to specify a specific queue, if you simply leave the link to queue blank, you'll see that it specifies the next queue in the list. So that's quite handy if you just want to go through something here. And quite often people will actually just indent this to give you an idea that there's an auto follow. When you close up the description, we then see for the DSM or the stage manager operating the show, it's all a bit more straightforward. We hit the pre-show. And when it's time to start the show, all they have to do is hit the go button. So in this case, the space bar, the time counts down and the show begins. Okay, so that's all we have time for in this tutorial. So just to recap what we've done, we've been able to add cues into the queue list. Uh, and this time we've managed to fade cues and we've used the second player in order to layer cues together. We've also now managed to link some cues together so that single button pushes can be used to perform whole bunches of operations.